everybody, and welcome to Crochet, a Canadian crochet podcast. I am your hostess, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time, welcome. If this is not your first time, welcome back. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and make sure you press the bell if you need to know when I upload right away, which I recommend because sometimes you forget to watch things. I understand. At least I forget to watch things. Anyhow, thank you so much for joining me today. Alrighty, let's get started on this episode. I'm going to give my standard caveat that I apologize for all of the background sound. So, yes, there's a weird noise because my one dog is chewing on a bone right now. There will be other weird noises. That's how we, that's how we do. Okay, so I have some exciting news to start out with, and I wanted to make sure that I said this right away, is that as of, I did a very, 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 very quiet soft launch on Ravelry last week of the Roaming Cowl. I decided to call it Roaming because it goes around your neck and I like outdoorsy terms and things like that. So that is what this is called. It is a free pattern, free download, but it is only available on my website and on Ravelry. It is just meant to be a fun little thing that you can grab and work on while you're watching TV and all of that fun stuff. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. If you would like to head on over to Ravelry or my website to grab it, that would be great. You do have to add it to your cart on my website to get it. Um, but if you're having issues with it, please let me know. You can email me and I'll leave all of that information in the description box below. All right, let's get started with my works in progress. So the duvet cover is coming along and I, not very smart of me. I moved my stitch marker for some reason, I don't know why I did this, but I was like, oh yeah, make sure you move it. But it's here now, but I believe, where was I? I feel like I didn't get too, too much done. Oh yes, it was here. It was about, it was roughly, yeah, I think that I had a third row of bubbles started. So it was about there that we had, so in a week, yeah, that, for me, that's not great progress because I think the week before that I had like this much done. Oh no, it was this much. I remember. Um, yes. So it's, it is what it is. I ha just haven't been working on it because I've been working on some other stuff, which you'll see. But it, I mean, it's coming along. It's going to be one of these projects that you just like slowly but surely just like pick away at it and keep going. And it'll, it'll just be like one day we'll be like, oh, it's done. Yay. That's how it'll be. I promise. Um, so I know how I was, do you know how I was talking last time that I was concerned about the yarn going, oh, I think I added a stitch there. Anyway, it doesn't matter um, that it was going to go and be shaped like that. So that is happening a bit, but I think when I'm finished and I put the border around it, I'll be able to sort of play around with it a little bit and, and flatten it up so it doesn't do that anymore. But all that being said, I don't think it's turning out terribly. I really like that I can see the blue and the blue here, the turquoise, um, together to see like how the bobble looks, you know, in flat versus in like roughly the same size area here. Um, and then, yeah, so then I guess the next, outside of just finishing it, the next big thing is that I wanna put some tassel-y bits on it just for more visual appeal. Um, but yeah, I, that like, to me, like that is so far down the road, like I don't even have to worry about it. But yeah, so that that is coming along. Like it, love the color. I just, I don't know, I think it's really pretty and I just, I like it. It's, to me, it's going well. I really I enjoy it so there's that the next thing I am working on so I discussed last week was it now I can't remember some time ago at least in the not too distant future or distant past I was talking about a sweater that had bees on it that I had seen on Instagram that somebody said that they had knitted from scraps which maybe they did maybe they didn't I don't know and uh, so I'm getting started on that so I'm making this for my friend and I am using the homebody sweater pattern that I have used in the past, but I have made some sort of personal adjustments to it because um, the yarn and the hook that I am using for this is not what is called for in the pattern. So it just, it works up differently. So I am kind of going on the fly, just making adjustments as I go. I am using the homespun yarn. This is in Regency, I believe is what it's called here. This is the, this is the label. And then here's the color details. Hopefully you can see that. And then here's the other details. This is the old one that I have had for a while. So I don't know. 
I look at this, I always hope it'll like inspire me for something else, but, or it'll like give me information that I didn't have before. Actually, you know what I really hope when I see these things is that I, um, it'll tell me when it was made and it doesn't, and I wish it did, but I love you. Anyway, so I have started making this and I've added, I might actually, I'm going to pull this out and I think I'm going to do something a bit different, but I've added a little bit of, you can see it's kind of bumpy there. Um, and I'm going to put some plants in the bumpy spots. That's what's coming next. So I don't have any glue and I'm going to keep this attached right now because it's attached like this. And I put a stitch marker in just to hold it because it's, I'm really going to be exercising something that I'm not accustomed to. And that is color work. So I've done, gosh, a long time ago, I made a pillowcase for a pillow that we had in the house and it was like sort of a buffalo check plaid it was orange and turquoise and off-white which surprise surprise uh probably a year ago anyway that I guess technically that was my first introduction to color work because um this is made in half double crochet almost everything but the pattern that I was using for the buffalo check plaid also half double crochet but in the lines when you're going along, you keep one, you keep both strands um, like active, I guess. So you crochet one of them in to the, like to the, well, you, you, whatever one you're not using the color that's going to be at the front, you crochet like down along the side and then you lift it up and switch. So I will have to be doing that, uh, which again, like that's why I have left this attached to the ball because I for sure I'm going to do that for the first row because you won't be able to see it. The blue that I, I'm going to go pick up is really light by comparison. I think it's going to be a really nice juxtaposition um, because the way the way that the blue um, changes color is very similar to the way that this changes color, but it's a lot lighter than this. Um, and for the person that I'm making this for, I think that's going to look really nice because she is a lovely blonde, blue-eyed person that light colors just really lend themselves. So I wanted, I definitely wanted the light color to be by her face as much as possible instead of getting, cause there's a, there's actually a really pretty like midnight blue. I apologize. You're going to see the puppy all over. I always apologize. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. I'm making this yarn with this stuff that I was given, um, gosh, a long time ago when I was making that other thing back in the day. Um, so I've just started with this and I'm going to leave this attached. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need both balls, but I'm leaving this like this for now. Uh, because I, uh, because it's, you make this in two pieces and then you stick them together. And I also, I need this, I need the bottom of the shirt to have this color on it. And then the bottom of the sleeves to about here, I'll have to measure exactly, um, is going to also have the green on it. And I, I haven't looked fully at the pattern. I've just started looking. So it's bottom up to the top, but I can't remember if you make the panels, and sew them together and then you make the arms, do you make the arms cuff up? I guess it doesn't really matter, but I can't remember if you make like the giant T and then you stick all that together or if you make the rectangular panels and then sew them together and then put the arms on. I can't remember. Regardless of which way it is, it does work out. But I, yeah, whatever this is, I have to have the same amount on the sleeve or roughly, I don't know, what, however that ends up working out. Um, which again, I, I don't think it's going to take up the whole thing, but I want to try to make the, the two sides of whatever the panel looks like at the same time. So I will be starting on the second one. Um, gosh, I'll probably do that tonight. I think we'll see. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? I think it's, and it's not that it's like good enough, but I, I want it, I want it to be like nicely homemade. If that makes sense. All right. And then the third thing I'm making is yet another triangle shawl. This one I am very much using. Okay, so this one's for me specifically. I am using it for the summertime as a cover-up when we're walking around the beach and stuff. Not because I am embarrassed, but I just, I don't know, I'm getting to that age where I need, really need to make sure my skin is not just on fire all the time. So that's what I am doing with this. Um, I will talk more about this yarn, but I, where did I find this pattern? This was another, this was another, um, another Pinterest pattern, and it's a little bit different how they constructed the corners than I'm used to, but I, it's coming out really, really nicely. So I, I like it. And I think the color is just beautiful and I wanted a nice open weave. So the ball calls for between a 2.5 and a three millimeter. I want to see it's knitting needles because almost exclusively the yarn that the yarn store carries is 
geared toward knitters. Um, sometimes they have double, or ha they'll have both on the ball, but this one doesn't. Um, so I am actually using a five millimeter hook on this to get that like nice, like drapey open flow. So it's nice. This is called Lamp Gorgeous. Outside of pattern release, I have completed one thing this week, and that was what I ended up working on instead of working on the duvet cover. And that is, I made this cardigan. It looks like a scarf. Just let's come with me on an adventure. I have one part that I haven't put in to the end. I haven't sewed in, um, but the rest of it is. I just forgot about that. And when I locked this, I used a spray, but I think I used the wrong one. So my cleaning spray and my smelly spray are very similarly bottled. And because this smells like vinegar, I'm going to say that I didn't use the right one. So it's going to have to go in the wash before it goes in the shop. That's the bottom. I guess it doesn't really matter. So this I constructed, it is Red Heart. It's a wrap yarn. I believe it's called Blossom, but don't hold me to that. And what I did was I, this is made in two panels. So this is the center of the panel right here, all the way down. So I did a granny stripe, as you can see. Um, so it goes that way first. And I, so I crochet, I'm not even sure if I can show it to you if it's going to work out. But. So what I did was I crocheted sort of in that it's called like that that back hump of the of the chain when you make it so the chain is comprised of three parts and when you when you flip it kind of like a half half turn like about 45 degrees it'll have like the loop that goes like that which makes two parts and then it'll have the other part that comes up like this so you put your hook through that and that's, it's a little bit more tedious because you really have to look and intentionally put it through that. So that's, yeah, that's, that's what I did is I put it through there to create a chain. It, so when you flipped it over, it looks like the chain is on the underside, but you work up this way and then the chain is left. And it's nice to do that because, um, for this kind of project, anyhow, because when you come back to do the second side, everything is like nice and crisp and like flat together, which is what I wanted. I mean, I know that there's other ways to do this, but this is just what I chose. So I, I like it. Um, I like, I like now seeing this yarn that it's made. This is the first time I've ever made anything with this color. Uh, the striping is a bit bandy, but from a distance, it, it's not that noticeable actually. Like, because I, I mean, I see things up close all the time. And then I like, I actually like to see things on camera because many, many times I see things on camera and I'm like, that looks incredible on camera. And I think when I see stuff on camera, it's more like how the general public would look because very rarely is somebody going to come up to you and be like, hmm, right? Like, people don't do that. At least they shouldn't. But they'll see it from a distance and it will just, it'll speak, it'll speak differently from a distance than it does up close. But I mean, it's just, it's interesting. Um, yeah, like it goes like from beige to pink and gray, green, purple. It's got, it's got quite the gamut of colors, but I think it's, I think it's really lovely. And I'm def, this one's definitely for sale. This will be a size medium because it is, I'll have to get an exact measurement. I will put it up in my shop. So you'll have to follow me at hervagabondheart.com to see it in the shop. I will leave that in the notes below. And yeah, that's the only thing I finished this week. So Pretty. I kind of don't want to let it go, but it's one of those things. Can't keep them all, right? I'm going to give a shout out to my yarn store in town here. I got this bag with my purchase and it, I, this is, okay, so I have to, I'm going to preface this. I can't say that this is going to be the policy for the rest of time never ending. This is just what I know today for right now. And it is going to depend if you go to the store later on if they still are engaging in the practice like this but this is what i was told and this is how we're operating as of right now so i received this bag for free because it's my first purchase they're moving away from plastic bags which is awesome and you're we're getting these reusable they feel like mesh but they're not um bags and if you need a bag then they will cost a dollar every time that you go into the shop and if you bring this one back or if you have several of these one of them you get 5% off of your order or your, your purchase. So that's great. It's the GST. So I purchased this yarn, this Estelle yarn, or Estelle yarns. I'm not sure. It's made in Turkey and this is 50% acrylic and 50% cotton. And I, I think I already chatted enough about this, but isn't it like 
it's so pretty. I just love the color of it. The pattern on the side, it's for knitting, but I think it looks really cool. It's called Falling Leaf. I don't know. It's, it's very, very sweet. I just, I like it. Oh, this says it uses 4.5 millimeter hooks. I didn't even look, or needles. But it says two and a half, four. I don't know. Maybe knitters can explain this to me, but I feel like you guys typically, more often than not, you adhere to this when you're making stuff. So how, how, do you, how does a knitter choose their needle size? Like that, it's very confounding to me because I feel like the math isn't the same between crocheting hooks and what size I want to use versus when I see somebody knitting something. Like I feel like all the time everybody's using like 2.75 needles and I'm just like, that is so small. But it seems like a really common size. Whereas I'd say for crochet hooks, like probably like a five, five and a half, six, like those would be the, those would be the ones that are common. But yeah, yeah, how, how do you decide? How do you decide? So I purchased that. And then I got, there was a bin and it was buy two, get one free. And I got this yarn here. I'm just gonna show you the one. Um, it says Pro Lana Mein Vol. It's from, it's from, it, it's made in Italy, but I have a friend who, she lived in Bavaria um, so she's German and she lived in Germany for basically her whole life until she came to Canada. So I had her help me figure out what this was. I don't know what the mine is or if I'm even saying that right. It might not even be. But wool is wool. So that, that one was pretty easy and straightforward. So it's, it is 41% cotton, 39% wool, 13% pol polyamide, polyamide, and 7% elite polyester or... I'm having trouble thinking of like synonyms for elite but like that's what it says is, or if, it, if it's French it's elite but that's not what it says it's German and but it's, it's she helps me with the washing instructions as well because right now I'm like heiss wash bar or wash machine and wash machine and fest that means machine washable I remember that because I it to me it sounded like washing machine fest which I thought was really funny and yeah, I don't, it doesn't really have, oh, a machine wash hot, maybe, something like that. Wash bar is, is wash something. Anywho, sorry, I'm getting, when stuff is in another language, I'm always so fascinated by it. Anyway, I got, they're, they're two different colors, so they don't have names, luckily, because I wouldn't be able to figure out what that is. These are, these two are uh, 496, they're the same color lot, or dye lot, I mean, it says Pati. I love it. it's Fabre, 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 that must be the Italian part, but it looks like it says like Fabre and Parti on it in French, like that's how I would pronounce that, but if this is made in Italy, that's not how you would say that at all. Uh, yeah, so they're the same dye lot, same color lot, everything like that, and then this one, they only had one of this one, which I was like, mm, because I really, I was really drawn to this one, because it's like, it's, it's like this one, but a little bit more moody, it's less purple, more black, more gray. It's really, it's really pretty. I just, that's what drew it, drew me to it is I love the color. Um, but yeah, so they only had one of these and they only had two of these because otherwise I would have just bought three of these. Uh, my, I plan for these ones, surprisingly, is that I know these, this is sock yarn. Like that's what it's, that's what it was marketed as. That's what I was told it was. And it says golden socks. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to make socks with these. And because, okay, so if you're knitting, this one would take, or this this ball should make two socks. That's what I was told. But because crochet takes more yarn than knitting does, and I prefer a, like a long, a longer, I love, okay. This is so lame and I, I understand it, but I love tube socks. I've always loved tube socks. I don't know what it is. And I also have compression socks that come like, right up under my kneecap. Oh, those are one of my favorite things to wear. I just, I don't even have problems with my legs. Like it's not the compression that I like. I just like, I like them being pulled up, but I don't, I don't wear them when I wear shorts. I want to put that out there. That would be bad. So yes, that is my plan for this is to actually make socks. That is like well down the line. I have so many other things that I have to get sorted out before I do that. Okay, two nerdy things that I mean, what would this podcast be if it wasn't a little bit nerdy? Because it's me. Uh, I, after receiving the notification, and if any of you have an Etsy story, you'll know the notification that I'm talking about. 
I decided that I am no longer going to list items on Etsy. And I know that my Etsy store was incredibly short lived, but I have had, there was two rate increases in the time that I have been a part of Etsy. And now it's just, it's not, to me, it's just, it's not, it's not worth what it costs for what I'm getting out of it. And right now I don't have the time to become like the hardcore Etsy SEO specialist or anything like that, nor do I currently have the desire. I just, I don't have, I don't have the bandwidth for that right now. So I have taken my pattern off of Etsy and I have taken my other things that I've listed off of Etsy and I've moved them back onto my personal platform because the fees are way more reasonable. I don't have to pay renewal fees. I don't have somebody else taking or the, the, the fee that it costs me now is, I think it's 2.8% of some or something like that to pay for my transactions, which like, it's not that bad. It's a, it's a couple of cents most of the time. Um, I guess on big ticket items, it would be more, but originally it made more sense to move to Etsy. And then all of this has happened the, and you know, like having to get all this stuff sorted out. So I, yeah, I've, I, I am keeping my account and I'm keeping my store and I'll probably get closed down due to inactivity, but I, I don't know what to do with that. I, uh, yeah, I'm keeping it for right now. So if anything, I don't want to take away that opportunity right now, but I, yeah, just for now, my Etsy store is not active. It's not working. You can still contact me through there. I do like, I get messages and things like that. That's totally fine. But yeah, that I'm not selling on Etsy right now. And another thing to do with that is I'd like to preface this with, I'm not Catholic, but I do like Lent because usually people's new year's resolutions have taken a big nosedive and a slump by, by Lent. Um, so I like to use that kind of as like a re-entry into our, our goals for the year. Personally, it doesn't have to be like that for everybody. That's just something I like to do. But I've decided I removed a whole ton of apps from my phone. So I had I had TikTok, which I don't use, but that one was easy to get rid of. I got rid of Instagram. I don't have Facebook. I took off Pinterest because I want I don't want to be on my phone all the time. And I mean, I've, I spend a couple of hours a day on it doing whatever. Uh, and it's, I, I don't feel like it's a problem for me, but I'm like, mm, I probably could have done other stuff in that time that I was like sitting and doing this. Also, I don't, I, I'm kind of toying with the idea of deleting my Instagram account completely because I've been on Instagram in one way or another since it opened for Android users. And I want to say that that was in like 2010, 2011, something like that. Maybe even later. I can't remember exactly, but I've been on there for a long time. No, my pictures don't go back that far, but I feel like the, for the amount of work that I put into it, I get so little back. Like it's just, it's not, it's not the kind of like digital relationship that I was kind of hoping it would be. And it's, and, and it's not that I want to be an influencer and it's not that I want to have 20,000 followers or a hundred thousand followers or anything like that. It's just, I don't know. Like I don't, I don't use it as a way to keep up with people I know personally in real life. And it's not, and as a sales channel, it's very weak, which is okay. I kind of expected that from the get go. But yeah, it just like my personal ROI on it is like, it's not, it's not worth me like worrying about it really right now. So I, yeah, I've decided I haven't deleted the accounts. I, but I don't have the apps on my phone. I don't look at them while I have a computer, anything like that, because like nothing comes through. I still have Facebook messenger on my phone, but that is more for my husband's business. Um, because we both can't, we both take care of some of the messaging things on there. So yeah, like I don't think I'll be able to delete the accounts completely right now, but I mean, I'm going to see what I'm going to see if anything is different at the end of Lent before I make that decision. Um, but yeah, I just, and I'm not saying like, I'm going to be like a massive YouTube star. Like, I think that's so like, that's so silly. I don't, I don't want to do that for that reason, but 
I, I don't know, I feel like I'm really enjoying YouTube so much more than I've ever enjoyed the other platforms. And I feel like the organic growth that I have been experiencing has been really, really good so far. I'm, I know it's going to, like, I have a chart that I keep and that I reference um, sort of how growth goes, like, for a typical, like, small number subscriber list. And I'm following the trajectory pretty normally. And, yeah, so, like, I don't... I don't really need to have so many social media accounts and spaces that I have to upkeep and make sure that I'm tracking messages and all of that stuff. Like, man, I gave up Twitter like years ago and I don't even miss it. So like, I'm sure Instagram and Facebook are going to be the same. Um, so if you are sending me messages on there, which again, like nobody does, but if you, you know, feel like it and you have, I am checking it every couple of days, just the messages. I don't, I'm not worrying about followers or putting up content or looking at other people's things, nothing like that. But so that, that is where we stand on that. So I would love to know other than YouTube, do you guys have other social media accounts? Do you feel like it is worth it to have all of these things, particularly because none of them talk with each other, which I would like if they did, but they don't. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you decided to spend a little bit of your day with me. If you would love, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. I hope that you have a great day. I hope you're staying safe and I will see you next week.